is George Su. I'm a student at Wangu University. I'm also an intern at Wangu Health Center. Um, today I'm going to talk about topical and exterior treatments. And please feel free to let me know if you have any questions throughout the presentation. Um, so when people think about oriental medicine, first comes to mind is usually acupuncture for the exterior treatment and herbal formula for the internal. And this idea sometimes prevent people from giving oriental medicine a try because they dislike needles, and which we do see that a lot in the clinic that people, they come in only want plena or they only want herbal medicine because they don't like needles. And fun fact, did you know 20 acupuncture needle can actually fit into a, a conventional hypodermic needle, which is a, a common syringe we see in the clinic. And so what are topical and exterior treatments? Uh, other than acupuncture needles, OMDs, which stand for Oriental Medicine Doctors, work with many other external treatment methods. Since there is no one treatment for all in Oriental Medicine, your own OMD will decide what treatment method is ideal for you based on the diagnosis. And topical, topical and exterior treatments are basically special technique and tools that OMDs wow. use on the body and along the meridians. And all this treatment method can be used individually or together with acupuncture. And different OMDs may have different preference on their favorite tool. It is really up to uh, their different approach and their different style of treatment. So there isn't like a right way or a wrong way when they do treatments, basically. And a couple examples of exterior treatment methods that can be offered by OMD. Um, first of all, it's, it's moxa, also known as moxa bustion. The main ingredient is mugwort. It's also called uh, atimishia. Um, basically, they, they, the herb, they roll it into like a cigar form, kind of like in the picture. And also you have the loose forms and we burn it. Uh, moxa is warming in nature. Uh, it's also available in many different forms. For example, like herb for decoction, you have patches, and I think there's also um, teas for, for you to drink as well. And moxa is mainly used for gynecological issue and menstruation issues uh, because of its warming property. But uh, there are also many other different uses for moxla, I'm just, I just not going to list everything here. Uh, and then next we have um, ba guan, also known as cupping. So ba guan, we use like a cup to create suction onto the skin. And we do have glass cups, plastic cups, silicone, or even bamboo cups. They're pretty common to see. Um, and cupping, two major method, you have the stationary cupping that the cup stays on there or you can actually move, uh, slide the cups along the meridians when you're doing treatments. Again, that's depend on your practitioner, what the purpose of the cupping was. Um, so the main function of the cupping includes release toxin, clear stagnation, um, in a simple term, stagnation is more like a, like a tension. Um, basically, you have like tightness in that area and then we use that to clear that out. And then also like very superficially, we do relax the muscle with this method. And moving on, we do have gua sha, which is also known as the scraping method. So gua sha, we have stone, jade, or animal horns. They are the three most common materials of scrape, scraping tools. Um, there are actually a lot more. Um, basically, something that edge is not very sharp, 
uh, for example, a lot of Chinese family, they use like a stoneware spoon or even like a copper coin. They use that to do scraping as well. And the main function of gua sha is very similar to cupping. Um, both cupping and gua sha creates purple or red bruises most of the time. And those are known as sha. And what sha basically means is uh, in simple terms, it's, it's like the toxin or the junk that was stuck at your channel. Um, I think my personal experience when you are doing both gua sha or cupping, it doesn't necessarily mean that the more bruise you get, the better result. It doesn't necessarily uh, translate that way. But um, I have seen that people, when people continuously to receive gua sha treatment, their bruise actually get lighter and lighter each time. So that, that's a really good sign and you know the patient is feeling better. And both of this method, I think they're considered more fast acting. So usually patient will feel much better after, right away after the treatment. So it's very common. Um, and I think they're very useful in practice settings. And then next we have Twena. Um, this is very similar to massage. I think the most different thing about Twena is uh, in oriental medicines, we, we work with meridians and collaterals of the body. We, instead of regular massage, they kind of work with muscle insertions, origin of the muscles, trigger points of the muscles versus uh, oriental medicine. We kind of have these meridians and that may relate to sick, sick, uh, specific symptoms so we kind of use those to be part of the treatment or you can use it individually as well there are definitely a lot of different techniques when it comes to twina you have people that does tapping you have people that do pressing you have rolling and then you have people that use like sticks they use equipments um, they use elbows uh, so a lot of different techniques also again there's no such thing as oh, what's the best technique it's really how the practitioner practice and how familiar they are with their style um, Twina can be used to move stagnation it's it also relaxes muscle tonify or sedate a specific acupuncture point um, there, there are different techniques that we use or uh, repetition, repetitions that we do uh, to kind of help with a single point, whether it's sedating or tonifying. And uh, next thing, liniment. Liniment is one of the major things I do want to talk about in this presentation. It's, there are a lot of varieties they are there for different purposes. And unlike most common liniments, I don't want to name like the popular ones we see here. But those usually, they just have menthol in as the major ingredient and that kind of, they use the cooling effect to cover out the pain, but it doesn't really get the pain away. So you have to continuously to apply um, but compare with, with that, um, the oriental medicine type or the, the herbal type that actually have herbal ingredients in there that kind of address the issue. Uh, it's, it's mild compared to when you get an acupuncture or when you have herbal decoction, but it does help. Um, ONDs often use liniments when doing cupping, gua sha, and tuina. It's, it's very useful. It's so easy to use. And I think the pros about liniments, it's, it's really handy. Again, easy to use. You can't really go wrong with it. Um, just common sense. Don't drink what you cannot drink or don't rub it in your eyes or something like that. Um, it can be found in local herbal stores, Asian supermarkets, even online stores sometimes. 
Uh, so I think it's really easy, accessible. Now we have a lot of online stores and um, these are over the counter. So basically they're safe and uh, I think they're really good for home remedy, something you have um, around just for some quick fix. Uh, I think the only cons about liniments is that it's not as effective when it's used by itself, which means when you're not using it with acupuncture, or with cupping, or with, um, with gua sha, because it doesn't penetrate as deep when you use it by itself. And a little bit uh, background, I used to play a lot of badminton I do, I, and then I move on to weight training. I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, all this sports activity gave me a lot of pain and liniment did help me a lot throughout these years. Um, that's why I want to talk a little bit, uh, talk more about the liniments. Um, you don't need to have Chinese medicine background in order to use this you can find them almost in every Chinese household or Asian household. There's some sort of liniments. So below are gonna be a couple of liniments I want to share with you guys. They are not in any specific orders. They are not, I think all of them are good. None of the, it's like my favorite or anything. It's, it, it's for different purposes and also uh, I, I chose them because they are what I have used in the past or I have used them in the clinic. Um, so the first one is Zheng Gu Shui. This name, this name translates to bone correct liquid or some people call it the bone rectifying liquid. It's very cooling. Its major function is for muscle and joint pain and such as strain back pain, arthritic or rheumatic pain. Um, caution, don't, you don't want to use this on any open wound or damaged skin because it can be very irritable. It can even cause like burn sensations. So avoid that. And you do not want to use during pregnancy because in oriental medicine, during pregnancy, you want to avoid what's considered blood moving you don't want to move your blood too much in oriental medicine. And usually in this, these uh, liniments that help with pain, they usually have those blood moving herbs in them. So Zheng Gu Shui, it's very popular. I, I, my personal experience with these is they are usually used for more severe pain, um, like a chronic pain that's, you feel the pain, it's coming from a deeper spot. So these penetrates really well. They are cooling. They're much stronger compared to other liniments. Um, so I will recommend these to people who has like a chronic injury to have. And, you know, after shower, you can use it to massage your spot wherever it's causing pain. Uh, that's what I would recommend for the household use. And then next we have Posamon oil. This is really popular as well. Um, the name a lot of time reminds me of put some on. It sounds like put some on oil. Uh, this oil is, is, is unlike Zheng Gu Shui, this oil is actually warming. And um, the major function is, is for mild muscle aches and joint pain. Notice that this is not, a, it's mild because it's, it doesn't penetrate as much as Zheng Gu Shui. And you can also use this for insect bites, burns, headache. People use it for chest rub when children are having cough and cold, and even stomach discomfort. So it's kind of like a liniment for everything to have a, a by hand. Again, you do not want to use this on open wound or damaged skin, and not for pregnancy as well. All right. And moving on, we have D. Wang Hua oil. This this name translates about thousand flowers healing oil. 
it's not the best translation, but that's what I found online. And the function, the main function of this liniment is to reduce bruising and swelling. And that's why this liniment is, is a very common liniment that OMD use when doing gua sha and uh, cupping because those two technique does create bruising and swelling sometime or most of the time. So this is a, a very good liniment to use. And it's, it can also be used for mild muscle joint pain, strands and sprains. Uh, it can also be used for mild burns. Um, but same caution, do not use an open wound or damaged skin. Uh, do not use during pregnancy as it also has blood moving herbs in there. And any questions so far? If not, we will continue to the next slide. No questions. Okay. And the next one is Yunnan Baiyao. This one is really famous kind of over-the-counter medicine. It comes in capsules, powder, plaster, and spray forms. This one, it's really popular because it has all this function or, or indicate uh, things that's used for more acute symptoms. So it can improve blood circulation, but also at the same time, stop bleeding. It's used to, uh, it can use for boost immune system. And then um, it also can be used to reduce inflammation and promote healing. So I actually heard many of the oriental medicine doctor that, that prescribe their patient to take this about two, a week or two before they, if they are having a surgery and they would have a much faster recovery period. And last, uh, even though this is not uh, label. This is not on the label, but I always say that if you want to take this during pregnancy, talk to your oriental medicine doctor or um, seek their opinions. See if this is appropriate if you're you're pregnant. Okay. Uh, the next one we have Jing Wan Hua Burn Cream. This is mainly for burn. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good cream for all kinds of burn, whether you have burn from chemicals, you have burn from fire, burn from boiling water, or even some burn this can be used for. It reduces pain, it reduces inflammation, and it promotes wound healing as well. So this is a, a really common burn cream in like a herbal store that you can find. So that's pretty much the only some out of the hundreds of liniments out there that I want to share with you guys. Um, again, there's no such thing as the best thing or uh, what I would prefer over another. It's, it all depends on the situation or it depends on the diagnosis. Um, I think if you have any question any your any OMDs, Chinese medicine doctor or into medicine doctors are willing to answer your questions. So don't hesitate to go in and talk to one of them. Um, if you want to find out more information or into medicine, it's, a lot of it, it's, it's, it's theory, it's, fun, it's uh, fundamental theories. So it's kind of hard to understand just by reading it, uh, a lot of it. It uh, requires you understand the concept as well. But I think we're all happy to answer your questions. And that basically concludes my PowerPoint. And now I want to just turn out my PowerPoint and then uh, use the live stream to show you a little bit about my equipment that I have at home. So I have a station right here. That's where I keep all my um, treatment equipments at home. I have a treatment table in my study room, but I'm just going to basically go through something. I, uh, most of the stuff I just talked about. Um, here I have a Moxa stick. 
this is indeed one of the most common forms of moxa we use. So we basically light one end like a cigar and if you have pain or like stiffness at this area then we will kind of do like indirect heating or warming for that place. So that's moxa. Um, if you cut it open it's just a lot of loose herbs in there, mugwort. And then next I have my cuppings. So I have the glass, glass cup. They come in different sizes um, in the clinic. So these requires you to work with fire. I usually don't recommend these for household. Uh, so basically as practitioners, we use a hemostat to clamp onto our cotton. And then we soak this in alcohol like a 90% alcohol and then we burn out the oxygen to create suction and then we place um, patients area that need to be treated for example. Uh, I can demonstrate on my wife because she's pregnant so just really simple demonstration and other than the glass cup I actually do have the plastic cups. Um, there are people that argue that one is better than the other. I think they both have their pros and cons. Plastic cup, the, the cons are it's uh, harder to clean this area if you're doing a bleeding cup, uh, harder to clean. But I think they're very easy to control with these pump guns. So basically you put it on the pump and you also apply suction to the area. And the reason why it's so easy is because I can use this. I, I use, and then I record it on my chart. I said the patient come in wanting to, uh, the pressure with three pump is good. And the next time he may come in and then he said, we can actually go up to five pumps. Um, so that's a really good way for us to chart our notes and um, any person a strong guy or a weak guy at one pump is one pump so it's not going to different so i think the the pressure is really easy to control with this kind of cup these are the type of cupping i would recommend for household uses um, but again the only concern is this part are harder to clean they have like a valve it's harder to clean versus the glass cup you can just wash the whole thing and next I have my gua sha tool. This one is, uh, I don't know if you can see, I'm wearing a black shirt. <laughs> this is a plastic one. I really don't like this one. Uh, plastic one, it doesn't really have a healing property. It's mainly used for just physically doing the scraping. You're physically creating that um, um, relaxing muscle kind of movement. But this one I really like. It's uh, it's a stone. It's called Bian Shi. Um, I got this one. Uh, it's a stone one. And according to the book, stone gua sha uh, scraping tool actually has cooling properties. So it's really good for people with internal heat or people that has swelling. So these are really good. Um, in while you're using for grasa and then I think they are more solid to hold in hand and to manipulate as well and they come with this little thing I can put on my wrist so I don't drop it because once you drop this this will break they're really fragile and last but not least my favorite part are the liniments the da wang hua oil I have one because I do gua sha and cupping. So these are my favorite for gua sha and cupping. And then a, a lot, I have a lot more that's not on the PowerPoint that I want to share with you guys. The reason why it's not on the PowerPoint because some you may not get it here. I bought them in Taiwan. Or uh, this one, I just got it. I'm still in the te uh, testing stage. This one is really popular. It has a lot of herbs in there. 
uh, a lot, a lot of er more herbs than the regular uh, liniments. Um, but at the same time, what that means is this one is much more expensive than the other ones. So one bottle of this, you can get two bottles of Di Da Wang Hua oil. Um, but I heard a lot of great things about this oil. Um, uh, this one is supposed to penetrate really deep. So if you have a, a deep pain, a very stubborn pain, what is described the way it uses, you palpate the pain and then you put one or two drop on that spot and you just apply a deeper and deeper pressure for 10 to 15 minutes. And then eventually you do it every day and then the pain will be gone. So this one, I am still in testing stage. I, I like it so far, uh, but the only downside I guess is very expensive. <laughs> I'm not getting sponsored by any of them, by the way. Uh, next one, we have Jin uh, Wang Hong Cream, Burn Cream. It's, uh, it's very nice to have in the kitchen when you're cooking. And then, of course, Tiger Bomb. Everyone knows Tiger Bomb. They're also like a multi purpose, you can use for headache, bug bite. Uh, discomfort and you can also use for like muscle and joint pain but I think they're used mainly very mild for muscle pain. Uh, Tiger Balm and um, we also have this bond stick that the school the students made. This is also for skin conditions I like the like an easy access bomb kind of I like that. I'm still trying this out as well. And then white flower oil, this is also very popular. It has a very strong scent or a very strong fragrance. So in my country, a lot of people actually use this for mosquitoes because you wear this, uh, it kind of works as a, like an insect repellent. So I like to carry these when I go to camping, go to hiking. Um, they are, these two kind of, Go with me when I go camping and hiking. They are very strong. They're good for bug bites. Um, also, if you have headache from too much walking, you ate something that's not cooked well, you want to apply this on the stomach. Those are pretty good. And then it can also be used for mild muscle and joint pain. And then I have these two. These two are the ones I bought from Taiwan. You can't really get them here. But I do want to that I use these for post workout or for exercise. They're kind of in the like a a bond type cream. Uh, the smell is very gentle. That's one of the reasons I really like it. It's not very strong, and uh, they work well on me. They're easy to store. This one. This one even have a little, uh, you can probably can see it's very bright. It has a little lid. So in Vegas, when it's so hot, it doesn't leak out. Like the, the, the bomb won't melt and leak out. So I like this design. Uh, yeah, so basically I feel like liniments are like a very easy to use Everyone can use it a lot of different purposes. Um, that's why I want to spend some time to talk about them. Um, They're really easy. And I think if you never have experience with oriental medicine, this is, this is a good way to start. To try out the liniments for your chronic pain, for your back pain, for your joint pains. Um, one of my suggestion is how do you know if you use it properly is that after you apply on the skin, you want to make sure it penetrates. So you want to do like a massage or a rubbing motion um, until you actually feel warm or a cooling sensation. And usually that means that you're getting that medicinal effect in to the skin. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for my presentation. 